Now we have a small bonus section where we get to have fun and play around with the code of the sketch. Yeah, we can modify and tweak the sketch code and make it our own. Our Arduino GUI programming window should be open and the Starship O2 sketch should be visible. First off, let's add line numbers to the sketch to make things easier to follow. Click on File in the top left hand corner, then on Preferences, then select the square next to Display Line Numbers. Click OK. On line 12, the LED flasher command tells the Arduino where the strobe light is and what it needs to do. In the brackets there are three numbers. The first number, 13, is the pin number of the Arduino connected to the strobe LED. And if we want it can be changed to any of the other output pins. The second number is the length of time, 900 milliseconds, that the LED is off for. And the third number is the length of time that the LED is on for, 100 milliseconds. Let's have some fun with these settings. For a start, we can swap the two numbers around so that the length of time in the off state is much shorter than the on state. Now we press the upload button and wait for the sketch to upload to the Arduino. This time the effect on the strobe light is completely different. It looks more like a steady light which flickers once a second. Let's try something else. When we change both numbers to 100 milliseconds, we'll get a much faster flicker. Let's upload to the Arduino. We get quite an interesting effect, almost like a rapidly firing phaser. Let's try some bigger numbers. We can change both to 1500 milliseconds, which works out to one and a half seconds each. Click the upload arrow. Here's another interesting effect, almost like an alarm light flashing on and off during a red alert state. The Blink library is a lot of fun, and one can get some amazing combinations simply by playing around with these settings. But for now, let's change the numbers back to their original values, 13, 900 and 100, and modify something else. It's important to change the settings back to the original unless we want to keep the changes permanently because the modified sketch gets saved automatically each time it uploads to the Arduino. Let's scroll down to the warp fade settings. In line 28 there's a fade length setting. It's been set to 4000 milliseconds which means that the LED fades down in about 2 seconds and then fades back up to full brightness within 2 seconds. We can cut this time in half by changing the value to 2000 milliseconds. We'll click upload to send the sketch to the Arduino. Now the fade effect is a lot quicker and we can change between states a lot faster. Let's slow things down this time. We'll change the 2000 to 8000 milliseconds and upload the modifications to the Arduino. This time the fade effect is a lot slower. In fact it feels almost sluggish. Maybe the LED looks a little too bright for our Starship. We can change the max fade setting in line 24 from the full intensity of 255 to half the brightness at 127 or any other number we want to try from 1 to 255. Our fade effect will arrive at 127 twice as fast as 255 so we'll keep the fade length at 8000 for now. Let's upload our changes.
We notice that the fade effect still looks fairly normal, but the LED is a lot dimmer than before. This way, we can tweak the brightness of the LED, even months after it's been installed into our Starship's deflector dish. OK, let's change the numbers back to 255 for max fade and 4000 milliseconds for fade length and find something else to modify. Another change we could try is to start the Starship up in warp mode. To do this, we simply change the warp mode setting in line 25 from 0 to 1. Let's upload the sketch to the Arduino. Now you'll notice that the deflected dish LED fades up with a blue color and changes to the yellow impulse mode after pressing the momentary button. We can change back to start up in impulse mode by changing the warp mode variable back to a zero in line 25. There's a built-in delay before the deflected dish lights up. We can remove this delay by bypassing a few lines of code in the sketch. If we look at the six lines from line 47 to line 52, which are in the last part of the setup section of the sketch, we can bypass the delay by changing the code slightly. At the beginning of each line of code, we type two forward slashes. This tells Arduino to ignore anything else on that line following the two forward slashes. We do this six times and the result will be that the delay is bypassed and the deflected dish LED will fade up immediately. Let's upload this to the Arduino. However, if we merely want to change the length of the delay, we can do this quite easily too. First, let's delete all those slashes we added in just now. We turn our attention to the number 40 in line 47. By making this number larger, say for instance 120, it will take three times longer to count up to 120, and the delay will be three times longer before the deflected dish LED fades up. Similarly, a smaller number will cause a shorter delay. Let's upload our changes and see the effect on the breadboard. To undo our changes, we merely change the value of 120 back to 40. Sketch tweaking is a heck of a lot of fun, but remember, the Federation uses different blink rates and different types of weaponry on its various classes of ships, so it's great to know that a sketch can be customized to suit our needs or to suit the needs of that particular vessel. If we use a dip socket in our final circuit board, such as the one pictured here, we can remove and reprogram the chip that's running our sketch at a later date, even long after the Starship has been built. I hope you had a great time with this bonus section and maybe even learned a thing or two. So, for now, so long and thanks for watching.